Rosanna from uh, Bali Hope. Uh, uh, she's an ambassador for Bali Hope, uh, an en endurance uh, athlete, uh, and um, and she will talk a little bit about the fundraising uh, that uh, they're doing. Uh, Bali Hope is a uh, uh, one of the fundraising arms of the Bali Ch uh, Children Foundations, uh, and we have a uh, Margaret, uh, the founder of Bali Children. Uh, Foundation that will talk a little bit about the work uh, that they do, the very important work they do uh, for the children here in Bali. Uh, so the topic of the presentation, endurance sport for good, for education and for community awareness. Please join me up here, uh, ladies. Forgive me, I have to use notes. I'm a mother and I'm an endurance athlete, so by six in the evening my brain is kind of fried. So anyway, it's wonderful to be here tonight and um, thank you Nordic Council for inviting me here and Marg to talk about um, a passion I have which is around helping people, education and sports. Um, I'd like you to start by just standing up. We've been sitting a long time. Just stand up, shake your legs, feel a bit more awake, um, turn around if you feel like it, whatever you need to do, just to wake up a little bit. I promise you won't fall asleep. And now you can sit down, back down again. <laughs> and I'd like you to just close your eyes for a moment. Yeah, just close your eyes. Nothing's gonna happen and take a deep breath. Why are we all here today? And what is it that brings us together? Are we here because we have something in common? I believe that the desire for greater connection and community sits deep in all of us especially at this time. You can open your eyes and have a look around at the room, connection, community, and have a smile at your neighbor. <laughs> they won't bite. <laughs> so this is the foundation of Bali Hope. Connection, community, contribution, and change. Through the focus on education, and health programs primarily. And Bali Hope brings together endurance sport enthusiasts, elite athletes, everyday heroes, to participate in unique sporting events to help transform communities here in Bali. The athletes usually come from all around the world, at this time a bit more tricky. Education and health. What do you feel when you hear those words? education and health. I believe that they sit in the core of all of us. We have a vested interest because it is these that take us into the future that we can't grasp, and especially during these times of uncertainty and transformation. So can I ask you another question? Does anybody run in the room or likes to occasionally go for a jog? Hands up. Okay, so a few of you. So this is um, this guy here, um, Tom Hickman. He was just a runner, a normal runner, not an endurance athlete or um, anything spectacular running-wise. And it was he who started this incredible foundation um, back in 2017 um, by running a solo attempt across Bali, 85 kilometers. So you runners out there, can you imagine yourself 85 kilometers just from an average runner to an epic attempt to cross Bali? So he's the founder, Tom Hickman. So this inspirational and dynamic man has founded the Bali Hope and since then has partnered up with the Bali Children's Foundation, Margaret here on my right. And we run two yearly sporting events here in Bali. The Bali Ultra Run, the run that Tom attempted to do, 85 kilometers, and the Bali Swim Run, which is the event that I do every year. And my partner is over there, Alan. <laughs> 
And so far, we've raised $450,000, which is pretty awesome. However, due to the COVID lockdown, we've had to come up with something very, very new. So the Bali Hope Challenge has um, come about in June. And this is a global virtual event, which to date has raised over $65,000 since June. As an ambassador for Bali Hope, and as an elite athlete, as part of this, I completed a solo 12-kilometer ocean swim in Uluwatu back in July, raising $6,000. So um, now we're going to do 250 Ks. The Bali Hope Ultra Try, which will be in November, on the 29th of November. And this will be a unique challenge covering 250 kilometers, a 5K swim, a bit shorter than last time, a 210 bike ride, and a 35 kilometer run. It will involve um, a total of 12, ath 12 athletes, and about six of us taking on the whole distance, um, including myself, Alan, who's over there in the jeans, um, Andy Wibabo, who's Indonesia's top male triathlete and a legendary friend, and the others will be working as a team effort. All in all, it's a bit of a crazy, crazy event, <laughs> and it will be the longest distance I've ever um, attempted. And our target will be fifty thousand dollars, fifty thousand, yeah, dollars for the Bali Children's Foundation to help children stay in the schools right now. Um, for the health and hygiene programs and emergency food supplies at this time. But Marg will take you through more of that in a moment. So I believe um, in my core that these epic challenges are not only providing necessary support for disadvantaged communities here in Bali, but they are fundamentally creating an opportunity for connection, for contribution, and at a critical transformative time in the history. To be a part of change and to be the change. At this point, I'd love to hand you over to my great friend, Marg, inspirational woman and uh, founder of an award-winning charity, the Bali Children's Foundation. Thank you, darling. Rosa, what an introduction. Well, first of all, to talk about movies for a moment, which is not my category, I'd like to mention that the movie you've just seen, the Rosanna Billy movie, was uh, shot, edited and created by Komang, who's here tonight. So it's local talent all the way, and a really, so please give him a hand, because I think that's pretty good stuff, fantastic. So, and the other question, topic we've been talking about is community and connection and as I look around the room there are so many people I've known over the years, Joseph who I've met more recently and uh, Jerome's down the back, Terry of course, Benny who I've known since the early 2000s and it's lovely to be in a situation where you can walk in and suddenly know people so that's always great. So, um, Bali Children Foundation, we've been going since 2002 so we've been around a while and like Bapak mentioned, Pakadika, uh, we've seen it all. It started straight after the first bomb, we've had the second bomb, we've had um, earthquakes, we had the song and landslide, we had Mount the Agung, and then of course the next earthquake in Lombok, and now we've got COVID. So I've been around the block a few times, and the key thing at each of these times is to, for us as far as possible to step in during the emergency stage and do what we can do, and to help with the recovery stage, and then get back to our core work, which is education. Uh, is really what we're about. So we're doing exactly the same thing this time. We've had to move out of our straight thing of, of teaching in schools and providing education scholarships and go out into the field and do what we can. So we might get started and have a look at the sort of areas we work in. So um, we do a lot of, we work all around Bali, but we do a lot of work in 
disadvantaged villages, remote villages, um, Baliaga villages, uh, villages in Songan. So again, anywhere there's been a disaster, you can be pretty sure we're there. So Songan, um, the Gillies, Lom North Lombok, North Bali, big centre there, Songan um, and, the, and the West. And so you'll see that the route of the triathlon actually goes through a lot of the territory. And this, this is Swim Run, which is on Lembongan, where we do a lot, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, so it's all this, these different athletic situations have helped fund a lot of our work. Now, we've got 8,000 children on the program, so the sort of money that Bali Hope um, has brought in for us is really significant because we've got pretty big budgets to do those numbers of children. The scholarships are mainly in, in villages like this, Baliaga villages, Siddhartha, Tigawasa, Padawa and so on in, in North Bali um, and also very disadvantaged villages in, in Lombok. But you know, people who have, these are villages that would traditionally have 60% um, of the population over 40 would be functionally illiterate. So that's kind of you know, never, never been to school or no, never any effective schooling. And that's really common, even on Limbongan Island today, the over 40 age group is still, a huge percentage is still functionally illiterate. So even though, due to the wonderful work of, of Bali High and all of those who came in 1990, the economic outcome now is very different, but it wasn't, and it's tourism is what's changed that. So, um, we, as well as teaching English in the schools, uh, spoken and listening English so children can work in hospitality, we teach STEM, which was what that irrigation project was about, and we've, at the moment we're doing a lot in terms of COVID learning. And so you can see the kids working in camps because we're not allowed in the school. So we do lots of camps all around the villages. And here they're creating a COVID book. So the children are creating their own content. They're teaching themselves about the problems with the virus. And in the process, their parents are involved, the village is involved. And it's just a great way to get the message out at a really local level. It also means the children, this is all their own drawings. So they're pretty impressive. And it means the children can have some fun with good quality art materials and it just gives them a really good break from what else is going on in their lives. At the same time, they're still learning a bit of English vocabulary, uh, rem remembering a bit of English vocabulary and, you know, next week they're doing STEM and they're learning about irrigation or, or solar panels or whatever. So it, it it's just brings lots of interesting outdoor thi outside things into these communities and that's what we really work on, community. Walking in, doing the teaching, getting the information out as far as possible. Um, so it's pretty tiring, fairly time consuming, but it makes a big difference. So usually, so this is Limbongan, I'll quickly tell you about Limbongan. So as we know, Tourism is there, lots of poor education in the elderly age group. And, but now many of the people have got their own facilities, their own um, tourism facilities, but their youth weren't very well prepared for it. They really didn't have the education skills in terms of English and computers that they needed to be able to compete with the foreigners coming in and the people from Jakarta and the people from Bali. The Lombongan population didn't have that skill set. So, So we've gone into Limbongan and we teach in every school on the island and we teach English from grade three upwards um, as spoken and listening. So there's a big focus on that. We also teach um, communi um, computers to years seven to 12. And I mean, the kids actually sit with computers, not look at them. And we're teaching STEM from grade three up. So that really heavy set of skills going into a community is we hope will make change. And everything we do, with the, we do with the year, a plan. So the Lom Pro, Lombongan project is an eight year plan. We went in in 2016. By 2024, we hope to have really um, well prepared students coming out to, to empower that, the, the environment on that island. But as you saw, we're also involved in recycling because there was a major problem with tourism that the island was 
disappearing under its own waste. And the local population didn't have much sensitivity towards it, so we tried to teach environmental studies through our English programs and our STEM, but it wasn't really getting anywhere. In conjunction with a local community group, um, Friends of Limbongan, Shush, Ingram and crew, we started a recycle facility. Now, so that's that is actually a business, a for-profit business, but we still have to, we provided all the infrastructure and we're still supporting it to make it work. But that has meant that it's given us the chance for, to really teach about the environment as opposed to just talking about it in class, but it's absolutely part of it. It's in partnership with the DESA and now everybody gets it and it's super successful as a result. The children understand that the plastic that they look after doesn't get thrown on the ground and doesn't end up in their oceans. And I'm sure, as Pakpandi would say, the ocean is so clean now compared to what it was last year. I know it's a less, less tourism, but it's also that facility is really making a difference. So we get off target a bit. This year we've done a lot of food work and we I had hoped that it would start to slow down. I thought by now we'd be able to start thinking about getting ready for next year's education costs, but it's actually gone up again and we're having to go back out and look for money again to do Sembaco. So, so far we've done about 3,000 packs of Sembaco in uh, particularly North Bali and Songan area. And we give substantial amounts, so like 20 kilos of rice, a couple of litres of oil, soap, etc. The, the main reason for this is that the, a lot of these properties are so remote, it takes so long to walk in and out. There's no point giving them three days food. You've got to give them enough dry provisions for a month, and that's what we do. So we go for four weeks, dry provisions. They've all got little gardens, so with that they can keep going. But it's really disappointing to see how much that demand is continuing. So um, that's pretty much what we do. We're incredibly fortunate to have Tom from Bali Hope um, as a social enterprise supporting us and extraordinary athletes like Rosanna, has, whose spirit came out beautifully in her conversation today, Alan, who's an awesome athlete, and all sorts of wonderful people, not just in Bali, but I think we'll have about 17 countries around the world who will be virtually joining in the challenge as well. So it's, it's quite a big process. So anyway, thank you all for listening. Really appreciate it. Great to see some friends here tonight. Thank you. Yeah, just to wrap it up a little bit, um, I just want to ask you all sitting here today, uh, after you've just been watching the videos and what you might be feeling, because we are in a real crisis here in Bali with people um, not having enough food, um, no income, etc. Um, so do you want to be part of something bigger than ourselves? is a question I pose to you to help those less fortunate now cope in this crisis, in this transformative time, and to ultimately be a part of change and to be the change yourself, not only now, but for the coming years. So all the proceeds from the raffle will go to Bali Hope, um, so please put something decent in there. <laughs> and thank you so much for listening to us here tonight. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much, uh, Rosanna.